Um, well, we are uh, talking today on this paper, on discrete time approximation to infinite horizon differential game. This is a uh, joint work with uh, Victor Gaton and Julia Novo. Julia is over there also. And uh, well, this is the outline of, of the talk. First, uh, it is, I split uh, the talk in four parts. And first, an introduction and motivation of, of the work of the, of the paper. After that, I will talk about discrete time approximation to differential games. I present a numerical experiment to see how our analysis uh, due to a particular problem. And um, if we have time, I will talk briefly about uh, fully discrete approximation to differential games. So what is the, 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 the objective of the, of the paper? The objective of this paper is to analyze um, some uh, one commonly used approximation to non-cooperative differential games. Uh, uh, more, precise, more precisely in this paper, we analyze what uh, is called discrete time approximation, sometimes uh, also semi-Lagrangian approximation to differential, to, uh, differential game, to non-cooperative differential games, in the particular case of um, uh, non-cooperative differential. This kind of approximations are widely used in the in the control in the in the in the optimal control theory uh, uh, in order to solve this uh, in order to find feedback solutions feedback uh, to uh, optimal control problems. So starting the, here, we have some uh, some references. Uh, starting by Gonzalo Rothman in 90, uh, 90, 80, 85. The, we have to, uh, to take into account the many papers by Falcon, by Mauricio Falcon and, and his co-authors, starting by uh, one paper in 1987. Probably there are some other before, before this, this, this date. Uh, in the book by Martino Barbi and Capucho Dolceta, uh, there are a very good state of the art until 1997 uh, of, of this kind of approximation. And the theory uh, continue in the, uh, to appear in the many papers in 2010, 2013, and until, until now. Uh, we, uh, Julia and uh, myself, have contributed also modestly to this literature in a paper, uh, in a recent paper. And uh, the thing is that in the case of non-cooperative differential games, not in the case of optimal control problem, there are very little analysis, very few analysis, and we don't have, we don't, uh, don't have any notice about uh, uh, nearly uh, no paper has published in this, in this area in the, for the uh, feedback solution, for the uh, Markovian, uh, uh, Markovian solutions. So uh, for, in order to, to fix ideas, uh, ideas uh, let's go to consider um, uh, uh, our, our, our problem. Uh, we consider a, a differential game with uh, n, n players, in which in, in infinite time horizon, in which the, the, <coughs> the objective of player I is to maximize uh, this uh, infinite integral here. Rho is the rho is the the uh, the, discount, the discount rate, and subject to some dynamics uh, represented by function here g. Here we we, we, we can work in in uh, without any restriction on dimension, so that uh, here capital V denotes the state space, the space of state, the state space, and by this uh, capital U's denote the topological space where the control player I uh, lives uh, without, uh, by the moment, any, any, any more hypothesis over, over, this, uh, over this space. We can think about uh, an n-dimensional n -dimensional, uh, state space, and each player has a n-dimensional state uh, space to uh, look for the, the control. As is uh, usual, 
we denote by u minus i the vector in which uh, uh, we have suppressed the, the component corresponding to player. And for any function h, uh, the notation h, the h evaluated in ui u minus i uh, means uh, what is written here, the usual evaluation of the function in the vector of row controls on the vector of controls. Okay. So we are uh, interested in, in a stationary Markovian strategies that I recall that uh, we call an admissible stationary Markovian strategies, a function with some hypothesis uh, or a smoothness hypothesis for the, for the function in such a way that if all players play his part of the, of the strategy, then the control dynamics has a solution that is defined uh, for all t and don't don't leave the the doesn't leave the state the state space. So in this uh, the 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 equilibrium concept of interest for us is the Markovian Nash equilibrium, the well known well known Markovian Nash equilibrium, no? which definition is here in order to to to, to fix ideas. Here, uh, she's why the denotes the. the notes, uh, an admissible, uh, admissible strategy for player I that has to make into some hypothesis in order that all the substitution that one can make uh, has, has some. So, okay, see, if, if we want to compute uh, Markovian Nash equilibrium of a in player differential game, we compute also the, the value of, can compute also the value of function. Um, for, for, for each player. And we have a verification theorem in order to have a, a way, a, a procedure to, 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 to compute this uh, Markovian Nash equilibrium. In this case, we, we can restrict ourselves for the classical verification, verification theorem that uh, is in many books, in particular, the book by uh, Long, etc. And uh, uh, in order to compute uh, Markovian Nash equilibria, we have to solve, to, to, to find uh, uh, a smooth solution of the hamilton hakoki bellman system of equations that is written here uh, by also see we are uh, some um, transversality condition has to be has to be satisfied, but this, uh, in our case, this transversality condition plays no role by the moment. So we forgot uh, in this moment the transversality condition. So this is our objective to solve then the hamilton hakov bellman equation corresponding to a uh, n player differential game. And, and this is uh, just the motivation of the paper. Uh, solve the hamilton hakov Bellman equation is a nearly impossible task. Only uh, very particular models can be solved. Uh, this is well known for, for all us, I think. Uh, linear state uh, models, uh, linear quadratic, low dimensional linear quadratic, linear quadratic problem because uh, high dimensional linear quadratic problem has a combinatorial difficulty in order to, to solve that. So, uh, uh, and very little else, very little else. Very, very, there, is, there is no more classes of models that can be solved exactly. That can be, uh, can I say, can be solved exactly. I mean, uh, of which we can find at least one stationary Markov uh, uh, Nasepi. Exactly of the equation. So this is this clearly this limits uh, the applicability of differential games because this limit the class of uh, models that we can use in order to make our modelization our, our studies. Okay, I, 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 um, if we limit uh, the kind of models that we use, we are losing uh, a lot of characteristic that perhaps in our particular problem are worth to study. So an example of this is in this paper uh, that is going to appear in differential game applications with, with Guillaume. 
and that uh, Guimar presented uh, uh, nearly one year ago in in this uh, in this in this seminar. So let 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 let's see to this uh, to this model by a moment. So the uh, here is a model with uh, with uh, two players and two state variables. Each player has uh, two control variables. Okay. Uh, the objective of player is to maximize this expression in which this function b of e k is uh, written here, is written here. So uh, we have the two state variables of the pollution stock represented by p and the technology stock represented by k, uh, the, some technology stock. And the two control vari variables is the emissions e and the investment I. Okay, uh, here uh, the product of the function alpha of the of the technology times the emissions represent the production of a country of a player, and then the, this uh, nonlinear function here represent the profit for production. Obviously, the objective of player I is to maximize the profit. So to increase the value of this function B. And in order to do that, he has, uh, he or she has had two, two possible ways. One is to increase the emissions in order to uh, raise the value of E sub uh, I. If uh, he increased the emissions, this has as a consequence an increase in the stock of pollution and the stock of pollution has a quadratic cost. So the, the other way is to increase the technology. To increase the technology, the only way is to go to the state uh, uh, equation for the technology. He has to increase the investment in technology. The increase in the investment in technology has also a quantity. So this is the See, this is the game. This is the game over two players. The technology is a common good. So the inv investment of the two players contribute equally in the increasing of the technology or in the in the stock of in the stock of technology. Let me let me see, say that uh, if we consider a k constant, uh, we put here k equals to zero, and, and uh, in consequence the investment also is cost is constant in this equation. This model reduced to the well-known Dockner alone model of uh, uh, that's boundary pollution. Okay, so this is an extension of the Doppler alone model. Well, what what we can say about that? Well, uh, for now, theoretical point of view, very little. Uh, uh, we can say very little because this nonlinear data we have. But if we uh, apply some numerical method, we can find some solutions. About this, this model, we can uh, make also a, a sensitivity analysis with respect with respect to parameters, and we can have some conclusion. And here, I, I, in the, the, the picture, uh, in this picture, in the left, you have the uh, the uh, it's, it's a symmetric model. Okay, so this is the mission for both players, and this represents in the right the, the inversion. Of the of both players in feedback form is a function of two variables: the variable p, the, the stock of pollution, and the variable k, the stock of, of technology. For each value of p and k, we have one value of the uh, optimal value of the of the emission for both players, for both players, and an, um, one optimal value of inversion for both players. And we can see, for example, some some curious thing. So the, the first one is the the no monotonicity, the no monotonicity of the of the uh, feedback strategies, or the feedback strategies, both in the investment and in the in the in the emissions. So this kind of, of behavior is uh, uh, you cannot have this kind this kind of behavior really in a linear quadratic problem or for a linear state problem. So usually the linear state, linear quadratic problem, the solutions, the, the equilibrium, the nice equilibrium that we, that we find in the in a linear quadratic problem, like piecewise 
this y is linear, this y is half and half in function that are monotone. Are monotone with respect to the both variables. And we have here some behavior that is uh, completely different. It's a non-monotonic, non-monotonic uh, behavior. If we restrict ourselves to a model, a standard model, linear quadratic or linear state, we are losing this kind of behavior that perhaps for our problem has uh, an importance. So this, these two pictures are, are, are computed by means, by means of, of a time discrete, a discrete time approximation to the uh, uh, differential game that uh, I, 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 write, I write before. So, so we, we have used so in order to compute that and uh, a discrete time approximation. Okay, what is a discrete time approximation? I start the second part of the, uh, the second part of the, of the talk of the talk. Well, a discrete time uh, the approximation uh, consists essentially in to substitute the continuous problem by a discrete time uh, game, a discrete time problem in which uh, we, we substitute the integral by a series, by a infinite sum, and we substitute the continuous dynamics of the problem by a discrete dyna dynamic or dynamics of the problem. This is equivalent in, uh, 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 when you make a discretization to make an Euler uh, discretization in time of the, of the dynamics. Uh, and a discretization of the integral by means of the rectangle, rectangle rule. Uh, th those are very simple discretization, both of the differential equation and, and of the integral. Here, h is a positive small parameter, a positive parameter that denotes the time step. And uh, we think that uh, the, the players are controlled, that they are control the dynamics at the discrete times in the in the in the times uh, tn that is n times the time step that is if we think h1 day the 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 player allowed to control the dynamics one time each day instead of continuously in time and this is a, a discrete time game that we we can think that as an approximation to the continuous to, the, to our continuous problem. So we, we, we are making here. We are, now we are making an an hypothesis that really is not a very hard hypothesis, and is that the uh, admissible stationary Markov strategies are the same in the continuous and discrete time in the uh, discrete time games. Okay, uh, that is. Uh, more exactly, what we need is that the admissible strategies for the continuous problem are also admissible for the uh, time discrete or discrete time approximation. Okay, and this is usually this is usually the case. We call uh, an admissible strategy for the discrete time uh, and set of strategies for each one of the player, uh, so that the, the control discrete the control discrete dynamic. Uh, is well defined for all n positive. Usually, the difficulties with the systems uh, arrive with the differential equation and not with the uh, uh, the discrete dynamic. Okay. Okay. For what? Well, for this uh, uh, for this uh, discrete time game, we have uh, a similar uh, concept as, as in the continuous space. Uh, we call a uh, discrete Nas equilibrium. If we have this usual, uh, the usual inequality that tell us that uh, if players in the discrete ga game are playing this part of the of the equilibrium, they are uh, playing the best response to the other players' strategies. If the other players uh, uh, play the his part of the uh, Nas equilibrium. This way, exactly as in the in the in the continuous space. The, the, the only the only comment that we can make here is that now the discrete time the the Nash equilibrium depends on the time step. 
are not the same, you will change the time step. You will take the time step smaller and, and smaller. If we have a, a, an equilibrium, we have also the, the value function, the discrete value function that of course, it depends also on this, on this time step. So we have a discrete time, this, uh, discrete time Markovian as equilibrium that depends on the parameter on the time step. When we move well, the, para the time step, the discrete time Markovian Nash equilibrium uh, also. And the, the question arises is what are we computing here? What has to do this discrete time Nash equilibrium that we compute here with the Nash equilibrium of our continuous model or the model that we want to study uh, in the first place, the, the, continuous, the continuous time? What? Uh, and this is the objective of the paper, to see uh, that uh, what we are doing here is to compute an approximation to the Markovian Nash equilibrium in some sense. Okay, but first we have also a verification theory for the, for the Nash equilibrium, for the discrete time Nash, Nash equilibrium that is very similar to the continuous time model on the continuous time verification theorem, the only difference I have to substitute the uh, hamilton jacobi bellman equation by uh, the Bellman equation. We see that the first difference is that the hamilton jacobi bellman equation are a system of nonlinear partial differential equations. And here we have a system of nonlinear functions, but not partial differential equations. In principle, this system of equations is easier to, to solve than hamilton jacobi bellman equations. Bellman equations are more uh, used to compute uh, uh, practically things than in the case of hamilton jacobi bellman equations. Okay, the same, but we have to solve this, this set of, of Bellman equations. Well, as I said before in the, in the, in the, in the introduction, uh, this is a proce procedure that is very is well known for optimal quantum, pro optimal quantum problems. Uh, Falcone, uh, Mauricio Falcone is his co-author, called him semi-Lagrangian approximation by other, by other interpretation that has not, uh, is not the, the objective of, of, of this talk. We have, very little analysis in the case of non comparative games. And uh, what we prove in this paper is that when we compute uh, discrete time Nash equilibrium, a Nash equilibrium of our approximate uh, problem, what we are doing is computing an epsilon Nash. An epsilon Nash, by epsilon Nash, I mean we are computing a set of miscible strategies for the continuous problem, in which they are not exactly an Nash equilibrium, they are not an equilibrium, but, but they are near an equilibrium, in the sense that the uh, objective function for each player is best than if he play the, the, the strategy is well, is best than any other strategy that he could play, except by a small error of order epsilon. And our objective is that this epsilon goes to zero with the time step. That is, if we reduce the time step, we are more and more close to have an, an, an equilibrium, but we have, we also, we, we always are in an epsilon. Mass. And this is the, the, the main result, the main result of the, of the, of the paper. Well, of course, to do that, we need some hypothesis because if not, uh, we cannot approximate anything. Let me see what that means in order to measure a uh, little uh, how, how are we on, on time. So there are some technical hypotheses that uh, are um, essentially the Lipschitzianity of the functions involved in the modeling, that is in the, in the Lipschitzianity of the function that defines the dynamics. 
this hypothesis guarantees that uh, the continuous dynamic has a solution defined for all t for for all positive time. Also, we have elasticity in the function that define the, the the objective function essentially because if we have not these two these two hypotheses, it's very difficult to approximate to approximate things. And also, uh, an hypothesis about bounds of the function that define the objective that uh, in the application is. Uh, in the particular province, in the most part of the of the cases, we can deal with this hypothesis because it came naturally by by other by other uh, by other things. For example, we have a compact set of controls where we choose the controls and the function if i is continuous as it appears in the hypothesis uh, before. Then this automatically we have we have this uh, this hypothesis verified. Uh, Satisfy and, and by other by other methods. Okay, that technical hypothesis that simplify a little the analysis. Well, the main the main okay. theorem. The, 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 the Javier uh, Javier Hassan has a question. You don't uh, see, but I think uh, Hassan I don't, has a question. Uh, okay, okay, yes, uh, Hassan. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's just for the example you uh, you started with with uh, pollution and uh, and K. Uh, you had an exponential gamma k there, so um, yeah. Do, do you still satisfy this uh, this condition that you have? Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, well, about the the, the boundness of the of the function that define the. Oh, I see that. The the, alpha. Yes, because because the we alpha is in both things. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, because it's involved. It's involved in a quadratic, uh, a quadratic term about the production. Okay. So the production okay. is bounded because the function has a maximum, and there the right. this is this is what the what I mean uh, with my com with my my comment before. Uh, yeah. Even if the function is not. Uh, is not bounded. Is not bounded in principle. You have a bounded, a, a bound, bounded uh, space where the the dynamics lives, because you cannot increase, for example, emissions indefinitely because you have another uh, another solution with less emissions and the same value. So emissions are naturally naturally bounded, even if you think also or you think always that uh, emissions are defined for all positive values of, of E sub i. In fact, in practice, uh, emissions in this in this case are bounded because you, 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 you don't want to have a greater emission having the same value of the term e with a greater cost. So you limit the, 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 the problems limiting uh, uh, the space where you Look for for this kind of of emission. Also, in principle, you can think in a inversion that is indefinitely large, but in practice, it's not a restriction to think that this inversion has a, a budget that, that that limits you the possibilities of of, of inversion. If you limit this, this possibilities of, of inversion, automatically you have a compact set. Of, of controls and then a, a compact set of uh, state space where the, the dynamics really lies. Okay. In this way, you can you can adjust this kind of hypothesis uh, in, a, in a particular case. But uh, as 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 is usual in, in applied mathematics, um, there is no one set of hypotheses that fits into 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 all cases. So you can you, you have to adjust. In order to find the, the, the objectives, okay, I, I don't know if I have. That's, 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 uh, that's fine. Thank you. I, I just didn't see the second alpha of k uh, in, in the b function, but now I see it. Thank you. Okay, yeah. okay. thank you. So, this is the the, uh, the technical hypothesis that, you, that we use. And, and as I said before, this is the main theorem. In the main theorem of the of the paper is a consistency is a consistency uh, theorem that uh, tells us that when we use 
any admissible uh, stationary strategy. And we change the continuous, the continuous uh, objective by the ta discrete time objective, we are approximating objectives. Uh, the limit when time step goes to zero of the discrete time objective approach more and more uniformly the uh, continuous objective. So this is, this is called in numerical analysis, a uh, consist, uh, consistency theory. And with a little more uh, hypothesis, a little more, uh, a little harder, we have that this consistency is in fact this uh, difference with, between the discrete time uh, objective and the continuous time uh, objective is of order h, so reduced proportionally to the time to the time step for h uh, uh, small enough. And with these two these two theorems is uh, now possible to prove the main, the main theorem that uh, says that uh, given a, a, a level of error, a miscible level of error for us in our, in our mass equilibrium, and given epsilon, there are always, if we, if we reduce always enough the time step, we are computing an epsilon mass when we compute a discrete time mark of mass equilibrium. When, when we compute really the nascent period. And under the hypothesis of the consistent consistency theorem with order, we have that we can do that exactly with order one, where this epsilon can be uh, made proportional or the H can be made proportional to the epsilon for the for the epsilon. Okay, this is the, the main result the main result of the, of the problem. So let's, let's see a numerical experiment to, to see how, how this works in, in, in practice. Uh, and we are going to put here um, a model um, which is the spy, of course, in the, uh, again, again, in the top megalon model of uh, transponder evolution. Uh, this is a two-player, two-player model, two-player game. Uh, each player has a one control, that is the emission here represented by V, I, V1, and V2. Um, each one of the players controls the emissions in, in one region of space. And this region of space, uh, this, this emission in this uh, in, in each one of the region contribute to increase the stock of pollution. And the stock of pollution has a cost, a quadratic cost in region I, and the player has a, a, a profit from the, from the emissions, and that is uh, quadratic in the, in the emission. Here we, we are thinking that the production is proportional to uh, the emission in, in each one of the countries. Uh, as we have two different regions, the stock of pollution in the two different regions moves from omega-1 to omega-2, diffuses uh, uh, from one region to the other region uh, in, in a form that is proportional to the difference between the stock of pollution in region 1 and region 2. So we see this equation, the uh, rate of uh, the rate of change in, in P1 is proportional to the difference between P2 and P1. This is marked mark here by this, by this matrix that is called the diffusion, the, the diffusion, the diffusion matrix. If P2 is greater than P1, we have an increase in the pollution stock of, um, of P1 that is proportional to this difference. If P1 is greater than P2, then P is omega 1 that is uh, giving away the, the, his pollution stock to omega, to omega 2, also at, at, at a rate that is proportional to the difference between P2 and P1. It's one of the missions, like as I say, contributes to, 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 to the, the stock of pollution in the corresponding, in the corresponding region. 
identify. This is a model that uh, we have, Yomar and myself, have studied in a paper uh, of 2019. And uh, uh, in order to, 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 to fix ideas and to, and to, uh, and to have the yeah, clarity, we, we have here what, what I said before. PI is the not the stock of pollution in each one of the region. VI are the emission on regional, which is the control variable for player I. For player I. The pollution diffuses through this matrix, K, that is exactly this, uh, this diffusion matrix here. And the rest of the parameters are, are constant. Okay, the rest of the parameters are constant. Okay, this is a, a, a linear quadratic problem, even if, if, if it's two dimensional. So in this case, we can compute exactly the, uh, the piecewise linear in a CPU. Okay, because the Hamilton Jacobi Bellman has this particular form, and it's well known that this kind of Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation have a value function, a solution that is uh, quadratic VI in, in the variables, and it corresponds the the strategies are piecewise linear, and we can compute uh, uh, if we are capable, if we can solve the 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 Riccati equation, the quadratic Riccati equations that that uh, that that appear here. So here in this in this in this model, in this particular model, we can compute exactly the, the NASA equation. We are using this model only to see what is the difference between uh, between the exact solution of a of a game of a of a continuous time game and the solution of a discrete time game that approximate that. Okay, only as, a, as an example in order to compute exactly the, the solution. So the discrete time approximation to, the, to this problem consists in changing the objective by this, uh, by, by this zoom and taking a discrete time dynamics, the Euler discretization of the continuous time dynamics that in this case uh, reads as this equation that we have, that we have here. So we have also the discrete um, the discrete uh, Bellman equation, and, and uh, observe that that, uh, that uh, as the problem is also uh, linear quadratic, the discrete uh, the discrete time uh, problem is also linear quadratic. This Bellman equation have also a solution that is piecewise linear. So we can compute also so we can compute also exactly the NAS equilibrium, the discrete time NAS equilibrium of this problem. When I say uh, we can compute exactly the NAS equilibrium, I mean we can compute up to the solution of the Riccati equations, the corresponding Riccati equation, okay? Up to the solution of the Riccati equations. That probably we have to um, use a numerical method in order to, to solve the Riccati equation, the quadratic Riccati equations. Okay. So our objective here is to check that given an, an epsilon, uh, a number, a positive number, we can take the time step small enough in such a way we have this, this inequality. This is what the theorem uh, tells us and what we want to see, to, 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 to check is how small we can take we have to take H in order to have what the, the theorem, when the theorem tells us that that happens. Well, the problem here is that uh, how do you, how, how you can check an inequality that involves an infinite number of, of, uh, of strategies here, an infinite number, which is why uh, here. So in order to do that, suppose that player J is bounded to play his part of the, uh, time discrete, discrete time and uh, equilibrium. Okay, then what we are going to do is to compute the best response of player I to this uh, uh, discrete time strategy. Solving in the, in, this, in, the, in the continuous problem, in the problem before we discretize the problem. So we solve an optimal control problem because we now uh, know what uh, are these these strategies, these, these, these time these discrete time strategies, 
And when solving this control problem, we compute this best response to the to the to the to the phi sum j h. Okay. Of course, in practice, in a general model, we cannot find this per response because if we can find exactly this per response in general, we can uh, find the Nash equilibrium in the continuous case. We were supposing that that we cannot do, do that. Okay. So, uh, in this way, we have this this inequality because this capital phi uh, capital C is the best response to the to the phi sub minus i. So it's always better than the uh, c sub uh, y for every for every other c sub y that we put. And in this way, if we check that the inequality for the epsilon mass is satisfied for this capital c sub y h, we are seeing that the the inequality defined in the epsilon mass is satisfied for all uh, other strategy c sub y. Okay, so the objective is to find this capital C is Y in this particular in this particular problem. Again, the as the time discrete time strategies are piecewise linear, we are again in a linear quadratic optimal control problem. So we can find exactly this in this particular example. In this particular example, we can find exactly this capital C y. Exactly up to the resolution of the corresponding recat equations. That probably we need that not probably that we need to to to, to use some numerical methods in in order to, to to find this solution of this quadratic or this quadratic equation for for C Z or for this y. Okay. So now we uh, uh, another comment is that as we have always this inequality because the strategy, the discrete time strategy is also an admissible strategy for the continuous problem. This is our, our hypothesis. Then this the value the, of, the, of the objective when player I use the best response is better than this FISU Y, okay? It's better than this phase y uh, here. So that the condition that we have to check is equivalent to see that the limit when h tends to zero or the maximum value of this difference is zero. It's null. Okay, and this is in fact the 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 the, the condition that, that we are going to check in this particular problem. Okay, so uh, we take some values of the parameters only, only to, to, to show you how, uh, uh, how work the, the, this kind of thing. So we represent in the, the, the next picture that I'm going to, to, to show you, we, uh, we represent exactly this, this difference. The difference of the as is asymmetric case is the, the same for the players. So the difference between one player playing the best response and the rest uh, uh, playing the discrete time, the discrete time equilibrium or the value of the, of the discrete time equilibrium in the continuous, in the continuous problem, okay? In the continuous W. So uh, I represent that for several values of the time step. Here's the, the, this error function for uh, H equal to one over 16. Okay, the next picture is the, 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 the error that we commit uh, for the time step 1 over 32, 1 over 64, 1 over 128. As we can see, this error is going to zero smooth. Okay, if we represented the maximum value of this, of this uh, the maximum value of this, uh, of this error in the domain, in the domain of, of interest, we have this, uh, this uh, line, which we have uh, represent here, the maximum value for H1 over 16, 1 over 32, et cetera, et cetera. And we can see that the error that we commit is going to zero smoothly, even uh, on with an order two, okay? With an order two. This means that each time that we uh, divide by two the time step, we are dividing the error by four. 
okay? We are dividing the error, the error by four. Okay? We have a case in which we have uh, uh, very smooth, very high order of convergence. In general, we can prove only uh, that this goes to set with no error. But in this particular problem, as the solution are easy, because our piece was linear, we have a, a high order of, of conversion, a high order for the for the for the uh, for the value of epsilon as a function of, of h. Well, let me say uh, that uh, uh, what we are saying is that when we substitute the continuous problem by this time problem, we are approximating a NAS equilibrium. But this does not mean that the particular strategy that we are computing here converts to an asset. In fact, in general, this is not the case. It is well known that even for a control problem, a uh, um, optimizing sequence of controls can, can no, uh, does, no, uh, does not converse in general to anything in any classical sense. Okay. Has, uh, this this uh, of an optimizing sequence of controls in general doesn't have a limit. However, in this particular case, we have also conversion of strategies in this particular case. So we need, in order to prove this conversion or a convergence of strategies, we need more hypotheses. We need more hypotheses. Always the time discrete, always the time discrete strategies that we compute constitute an, NASA, an epsilon NAS equilibrium. For a small age, the epsilon is smaller and smaller, but in general, this is a strategy does not converge to an NAS equilibrium. In this case, when we have some more hypotheses, which as is the, it is the case, we have also convergence of strategies of order one. As is here, I have represented for the for the same domain domain the maximum difference between the continuous piecewise linear uh, NAS equilibrium in the continuous case with the piecewise linear. Nas, uh, this was linear Nas equilibrium in the discrete time, in the discrete time uh, uh, model problem. And we can see we have also convergence to zero to this to this difference. Uh, we have convergence between the 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 piecewise linear strategy to the piecewise linear uh, strategy in the continuous space. Okay, but this is a feature that is particular of this example. Now we cannot generalize to uh, we, uh, to, to, other, to other problems. Uh, we have to study the exactly, this is a work in progress from now on, what I am going to present uh, in the rest of the talk, in the five minutes, in five more minutes, uh, is work in progress. So we have to put more hypotheses in order to guarantee that this is the case uh, with more generality than for this problem. Okay. Uh, Fully discrete approximation. To find uh, the problem is that to find the problem, our problem now is to find a discrete time uh, Markov Nas equilibrium, we have to solve the Bellman, Bellman equation. And we have here exactly or near exactly the same difficulties that with the Hamilton Jacobi Bellman. Before the, I say that this is a set of equations that is easier are easier to, to deal with than the case, the case of Hamilton Jacobi Bellman because they are not. Uh, because they are not uh, partial differential equations, nonlinear partial differential equations, but they still are nonlinear functional equations. Nonlinear functional equations, Bellman equations. So, in general, for the, uh, see if we put here general function, this is a difficult task. And we have to discretize, and we have to discretize uh, the discrete term the discrete time approximation in order to, to, to find to find uh, solutions of this of this kind of now, and the, the classical the classical discretization of the, of the Bellman equations is as follows 
we take, for example, a regular partition of the state space by simplices, that is intervals in dimension one, triangles in dimension two, tetrahedra in dimension three, and so on and so on. And in this regular partition, in the, we see the vertices of the triangulation, the, the vertices uh, that conform this partition by simplices. Uh, what we do is to localize the Bellman equation in this part in the vertices of the of the triangulation. Okay, in this way we have a fin finite set of equations. We have no more a functional nonlinear equation to solve, but a system of nonlinear functions, but a finite system of nonlinear functions. And this is much more manageable. But here we can use the classical uh, value function iteration, uh, policy function iteration, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the classical techniques in order to solve, in order to solve this, the, uh, this kind of function. This way, what do we compute is piecewise, a piecewise affine, affine, piecewise linear function that is mean to approximate the discrete time approximation. The discrete time approximation that in general is not piecewise, piecewise linear, of course. In the, in the general case. And also we are changing the admissible strategies of the discrete time equilibrium by piecewise linear uh, strategies that are meant to approximate the uh, strategies in the discrete time, in the discrete time program. So we have um, a very nice interpretation of this, of the discretization as as the following, we are solving a discrete time game in which we have substituted the function fi uh, and the function defining the, the dynamics by the linear, piecewise linear interpolant of, the, of this function in the same grid that we have used. So we have an interpretation again of this discretization, this space discretization that we use as a minimum problem, an optimization problem for this discrete time, discrete time uh, problem. And if we do that, you can show that this be uh, this piecewise linear equation is the value function for this uh, for this game, and then we have a similar uh, consistency theorem, and then we can finish with uh, saying that this piecewise linear approximation that we compute in the fully discrete and uh, the fully discrete problem are also epsilon as uh, for the continuous time problem before any discretization, before the discretization in time or with the discretization in space. And I think I am going to stop here. It's the 50 minutes uh, already that I talk, and I think that uh, that I want to, to stop here. Really. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Javier, for.